All right, I wanna welcome everyone to our live Saturday morning presentation. Uh, as you can see by my screen, I've got three questions here. They're pretty common questions. And today's presentation is something that I've done multiple times on our Saturday presentation uh, segments. And that's the art of asking questions. And so what I wanna do today is I wanna be able to help you uh, engage people in what I call questions. Because when you begin to ask questions of people, you begin to gain information and you can gauge their interest uh, and especially your ability to increase your probability of either the success of helping to turn that conversation into a useful lead, either as a product user for some of the Synergy Worldwide products or potentially as a business builder. And uh, what I want to do is I want to go through this presentation and then certainly if people have questions as we go through, unmute yourself. And then at the end of today's presentation, if you've got some ideas that you might like to do from a role playing standpoint to see how this art of asking questions can be helpful, uh, please go ahead and do that. And I call the art of asking questions, it's, a, it's an art and it's a skill. So there's a skill to this whole process and the skill is pretty easy. And then the art is learning how to adapt it in the situations that you're in. Uh, just like, you know, every time that you see a piece of artwork, they're not all the same. You know, you can see copies of artwork, but original art, all original art, every piece that you look at is original, it's different. But the artist typically uses techniques within the process of creating whatever they're doing, whether it be a painting. You know, one of one of my favorite artists that I, you know, if you if if I opened up my where you could see where I'm at in my office, you would see behind me uh, a bunch of artwork, all from one artist called Alex Ross. He lives here in the Chicagoland area. If you're not into comics, you would most likely never know who he is, but he would be like the Norman Rockwell of the comic world. He draws realistic paintings, and, and so he uses a certain technique, but every creation that he does is different. But the techniques that he uses in creating that artwork is basically the same. And, and, the, and it applies to what we're talking about today the art of asking questions. And I wanna talk to you in terms of uh, where we're at in the COVID-19 pandemic. For most of the country, at least where we live here in the United States, pretty much everything is back to normal. Uh, certainly there are still some places that have maybe some mask mandates that are still in place, or there's some uh, issues with regards to how many people can go in a, in a situation. But where I live in Illinois, there's no longer any restrictions with regards to going into places. You can go to the ballpark. They're completely 100% occupancy at, at the ball games. So, so pretty much everything is back to normal, which means that you're back into relationships with people, not on Zoom, where it's sometimes hard to connect, but you're actually physically in contact with people and people are gonna start asking you these three common questions. How are you, what's new, and what do you do for a living? And your job is to be able to take those questions and be able to give a response in both a statement and in that statement response that you give to them, hook them, with a question. So by adding a question to your response, you're going to increase your probability of being able to engage them in a conversation that could lead to the potential process of gaining and acquiring a customer or a potential business builder. So as I've said, we've got the COVID-19 that has been in our world for over a year and a half. And if anything that we've learned from the COVID-19 pandemic, it's the importance of your immune system. The healthier your immune system, the, the uh, less likely for you getting COVID-19 doesn't mean that you won't get COVID-19, but if you do get COVID-19, the greater the probability that you'll have less symptoms and a better outcome. 
So everyone understands the importance of having a robust and healthy immune system. And you can begin to leverage that. You can begin to leverage that through the art of asking questions to be able to gain a potential clients that have an interest in improving their immune system. Now, we're going to look at a couple of these questions. How are you? And before I get into this, you, you certainly can read my screen and you can see what I'm going to talk about, but you need to have, you need to, you need to put this in context of something greater than yourself. And what do I mean by that? So you'll see that I've got the Million Lives Project. You know, I've, I've been marketing the Million Lives Project for a long period of time. But we have other people that are on today's presentation from all across the United States, as well as we have a great, a great number of individuals from the Barbados, uh, you know, the island of Barbados in the Caribbean islands. And so you can begin to change this based upon what you want to be part of as some organization greater than yourself. So for example, I know David is on the call today and David works in the Hispanic community. So David could do something like the Hispanic Health Initiative or David's in the process of branding himself Su Buena Salud. So David could do something to the question, how are you? Well, I feel fantastic. I've been part of the Su Buena Salud project and they've taught me how to boost my immune system. Have you heard about this project? And see, what you do is you use a statement that answers the question, puts it in the context of something that you're involved in that's greater than yourself, referring it back to something that they've helped you do, in this case, boost my immune system, and you come back with a question. Have you heard about this project? So when you ask that question, you take control of the conversation. People don't understand the, the people who are asking the questions are actually controlling the conversation. The person who's answering the questions think that they're in control of the conversation because they're the ones that are speaking and giving you the information. But it's the person who knows how to ask the questions that is really the person who is in control of the conversation. And if you will learn the art of asking questions, you can control the conversation because it's not about you, it's about the person you're talking to. And the only way that you're going to gain information about the person that you're talking to is to be able to learn how to significantly, learn how to ask them questions that can gain information from them about where they're coming from and what's important to them. Because it's where they're coming from and what's important for, to them that is gonna help you assess whether this is a client, a potential client that you can benefit. Uh, I, again, the art of asking questions can be manipulative, but we don't wanna manipulate people. We wanna be able to gain honest information in an authentic presentation so that we can see whether we can be of help to them. We firmly believe in our mission, in this case, my mission, the Million Lives Project. And so if I was doing this, I would say, I feel great. I joined the Million Lives Project. They taught me how to boost my immune system. It, you know how important the immune system is in the COVID-19 pandemic. Have you heard about this project? Most people are not gonna hear about your project. You know, David uses Su Buena Salute. They're not going to know about that. If if the if our friends and distributors in Barbados did something like the Barbados Health Initiative, uh, again, most people would not know that. And so your response is going to be no. And then you need to have a response to that. No, if the person gives you a note, that doesn't surprise me. Their goal is to educate a million people or more on how to use natural ways to improve your health. Now, if I was David. It would be, that doesn't surprise me. Their goal is to educate the Hispanic population on how to use natural ways to improve your health. And learning how to boost your immune system is one of them. Would you like more information? So again, you respond with a statement that ends with a question. And the statement is designed to, again, 
give them a response. Now, if, let's say a person said, yes, yeah, I've heard about that. Wow, that's interesting. Where did you hear about them? And I use the question at the end. And that yes doesn't throw me off. Wow, that's interesting. Where did you hear about them? How did you hear about them? And, and so again, you're ending a statement with a question which causes them to have to answer you. Because anytime that you provide a question to another person, that person's mind can't let it go until the question is answered. So in this case, in this response, would you like more information? Again, that's going to be a yes or no. If it's a yes response, then you know, they have a great video to help you understand how to improve your immune system. What's your email address? Don't ask permission for their email address. Say, what's your email address? If they're interested in getting the information, they're going to give it to you. If they hesitate, then again, their hesitation tells you that <clears throat> As David liked to talk in the presentation that he did on, on selling, that their belief system is not equal to your belief system at this point in time. And your job is to continue the process of asking questions to gain information so that you can help bring their belief system closer to your belief system. You may not get their belief system to the 10 that you might be at, but if you can get them into a five or a six, they'll want information. And then the information that you share with them will take them the rest of the way. So the question is, what's your email address? They share it with you. And so what, what do you do? You get that email address and you say, great. When I get home, I'm going to send you a link to their video. It's just outstanding in helping you understand how you can improve your immune system. If you get the question, what's new? I decided to join the Million Lives Project and they taught me how to boost my immune system. Have you heard about this project? Or if I'm David, I decided to join Sue Buena Salud and they taught me how to boost my immune system. You know how important that immune system is in, in our COVID-19 pandemic. Have you heard about this project? Again, you'll most likely get a no response. Well, that doesn't surprise me. Their goal is to educate a million people in the Hispanic community on how to use natural ways to improve your health. Learning how to boost your immune system is one of them. Would you like more information? Or you could do a question prior to that. Don't you think a good immune system would be helpful? Yeah. Would you like more information? Yeah. So what you what you're trying to do is as you continue to do these questions at the end of your statements, you're looking to get responses that move your conversation further and further to your end goal, which is to put into their hands a link to a video and let the video do the work for you. The art of asking questions is designed to be able to, to, be able to help you gather information. And in that information process that you're gathering, that information, be able to help uh, create additional questions to the point where that person wants to get information that you have that's available to them. So rather than you trying to talk to them about the immune system, you want them to watch a video about the immune system. Let the video do the third party validation work for you to take that person where maybe they started out with a one in interest and you're at a 10 and through your art of asking questions, you've got them to a five or a six and they want additional information. And then the third party video that you're using takes them from a six or seven up to an eight or nine and you do your follow-up with them. And again, in your follow-up with that individual, if you're gonna send an email to a person or if you're gonna send a link to a video for a person, it's your responsibility to follow up with them to make sure that one, did they get it? That's a question. Yeah. Have you had a chance to watch it? That's a question. 
No. Well, when do you think you might be able to? That's a question. Is it all right if I follow up with you? Because I just want to make sure that you understand the information that's being shared. So again, it's all a process of asking questions to help you to move the conversations that you're having with people into a way to gain a new customer. Take a potential person and make them into an actual customer or client. So again, if they respond, yes, would you like more information? They have a great video to help you understand this. What's your email address? It's an assumptive close, a question that's an assumptive close. They're interested, email address. And then once you get that email address, you're gonna send them an email. I'll, I'll show you kind of the context of what an email is gonna look like in just a minute. What do you do for a living? Well, I coordinate with the Sue Buena Salud project in my area. I've been working with my clients to help them understand how to effectively boost their immune system. Do you know anyone who would like to boost their immune system? Or again, you know, you're, you're, you're putting this in the context of, again, something larger than yourself. You're a part of that, some, that project that's larger than yourself. You know, I coordinate the Barbados Health Initiative. And I've been working with my clients to help them understand how to effectively boost their immune system. As we all know in the COVID-19 pandemic, you've got to have a good immune system. So do you know anyone who would like to learn how to boost their immune system? Again, you see the words that are written on the screen. I didn't use the same exact words. The art of asking questions is exactly that. It's an art. So I use a technique. And so sometimes the words are not always the same, but the technique is the same. I'm, in, I'm part of something larger than myself. I've been helping my clients understand how to effectively boost their immune system. And I transition that statement into a question that hopefully gets a positive response back from them. Great. I've got an excellent video on the importance of vitamin D to help the immune system. What's your email address? Or I've got an excellent video on a new product that has come into the marketplace that is specifically designed to help you maximize your immune system. What's your email address? So, so again, you can, you're using a statement with a question to get additional information. Now, let's say that they say no, you know, because you are going to get some no's. But if I can help you use the art of asking questions that before, when you didn't use it, you got no more times than you got yeses. If I can help you understand how to use the art of asking questions so that you get more yeses than you get noes, then you know how to answer that yes with a statement asking with a question that's asking for an email address so that you can send them a link to a video. If you get no, then the 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 problem that most people don't understand is or, or feel uncomfortable with is when they get a no, they don't know how to exit from that conversation in a way that leaves both people feeling comfortable. And here's your answer to that. If you get a no, then say, well, here's my business card. Don't ever give a business card unless there's a need to. If you've got an email address, don't give your business card to that individual. It's not necessary. If you, give them your, if you give them your business card when they're giving you your email address, then there's no reason for them to have to have you follow up with them. They've got all your information. So the only time that you want to give a business card is when you get a no, because the business card gives you your ability to leave the conversation in a positive way that allows you and your and the person you're talking to, to move on without feeling uncomfortable. So, well, here's my business card. If you ever run into someone who wants to improve their immune system, then please give them my card. And if you hand a business card to a person, 
I can guarantee you nine times out of 10, they're going to take the card because it's their way for them to exit the conversation. And it's your way to exit the conversation. And what you've done is you've planted a seed within their mind that when they go home and they take your business card, if they haven't already thrown it into the garbage can, when they go home and take your business card, just like I have a business card sitting on my desk right now from a guy named David Mann who came to my front door looking to sell me uh, home insurance for my utilities. Well, I didn't say yes to him, didn't say no to him, but he left me his business card. And although I don't plan to do anything with it, I still have his business card on my desk. So maybe at some point in time, I'll change my mind about uh, having uh, an insurance plan to cover the costs of my gas lines and electric lines and, and the things that come into my home. Don't plan on using it, but the business card, I haven't yet thrown his card away. And, and you'll find the same thing will happen with people who you give your business card to that say no, because at some point in time, they might run into the need for your card when their immune system is compromised. Or if you've been talking about improving cardiovascular health, uh, again, all of this can be changed. What do you do for a living? Well, I coordinate the Million Lives Project for my area. I've been working with my clients to help them understand how to bring their blood pressures back into the normal range. And high blood pressure is the number one cause of strokes and heart attacks. And it's the number one diabetic complication. Do you know of anyone who has high blood pressure? So uh, again, what have I done? I've used my knowledge to be able to put myself in context of a bigger project, used a statement of what I'm doing to help my clients, put in the context of some data that would help them begin to think, wow, there's, you know, strokes, heart attacks, diabetic complications. And then I come back with a question. Do you know of anyone who has high blood pressure? They might say yes or no. If they say yes, great. I've got an excellent video on how they can use nitric oxide therapy, Nobel Prize winning information to help bring their blood pressure back into the normal range. What's your email address? I, again, you know, I don't have any notes in front of me. You're seeing my screen. All I've done is I've taken the information that I've invested myself into and I'm putting it into a statement with a question. If I get a no, again, well, here's my business card. If you ever run into someone who has high blood pressure, and they'd like to learn how to naturally address that, then please give them my card. So again, the art of asking questions, my techniques are always the same, but maybe the words that I'm using are different. They're strung together in a different way, depending upon the situation that I'm in, you know, where I'm taking the person down to. Or you're in a conversation with a person, you know, and, and they bring it to you. Well, you know, yeah, I understand the immune system, but I got another problem I got to deal with, and that's my high blood pressure. Oh, really? Well, that's interesting because the Million Lives Project helps people understand how they can use a natural way, a Nobel Prize winning way, and how they can bring their blood pressures back into the normal range. Would you like to get more information? Yeah. What's your email address? Great. I'm going to send you a video so that you can understand how nitric oxide therapy can naturally address your high blood pressure. Is it all right if I follow up with you? Uh, again, you know, that's the all the process of asking the art of questions. Now, once you've used the art of asking questions to be able to get a person's email address, then your next step is to be able to follow up. Uh, in, in this presentation here, before I get to the email, 
you know, there's other ways to create interest by asking questions. You know, you could answer, you could, you could start the conversation with an individual. How are you holding up in this crazy world of COVID-19? And then just listen to their answers. Maybe they've put on 20 pounds. You know, I've been stuck at home all this time and I've gained 20 pounds. Really? Are you looking to get them off? Yeah. Are you going to try conventional diets? Yeah. Have you tried conventional diets in the past? Yeah. Have you lost weight and then regained it? Yeah. You know, I think you might be interested in learning how to change the equation, how you can lose the weight but not gain it. Would you be interested in learning the new secret to weight loss? Really? Yeah. Well, there's a great video that I can send you that will help you explain the technique that you've been using and why it doesn't work. And if you learn how to reset your gut health, how you can have success in this area. What's your email address? So again, you don't see any of that information up on the screen. All I've done is I've learned the art of asking questions. It is the one skill that I believe is the most important skill that you can have that will increase your probability of creating interest that will allow you then to be able to turn that interest into an actual client or customer. Do you have any interest in learning how to boost your immune system? I, again, you know, the reason why I ask is I came across an eye opening video on the importance of vitamin D. Would you like me to send it to you? So all I'm sharing with you is there's so many different ways that you can go once you learn the art of asking questions. And like any art, you know, I, I look, I, I brought up Alex Ross. If I look at Alex Ross when he was a 12 year old doing art, versus as a 20 year old doing art versus now as so Alex is most likely in his late forties doing art. There's a huge progression between what he did when he was 12 and what he's doing today. He's so much better today than what he was at the age of 12. What's the difference? It's his application. Constantly doing art over time and learning his techniques and experimenting with techniques and in always on this goal of improving his techniques so he can put out the best piece of work that he can possibly put out. Yours is the same thing. If you're not used to using the art of asking questions, then you need to decide to start. And then as you start, if you mess up, you mess up. You learn from your mistakes. How could have I said that better? How could have I taken what that the, the information a person shared with me and what questions could I have created that would have been better questions? You do all that processing after you're done with the event that you've been in, you, the, the, the conversation that you've had with that individual. You review what you did mentally. What could I have done better? How could I have rephrased that? What questions would have been more motivating to that individual? Because you want questions that motivate the individual to give you information and once you get that email address, then you need to send them an email. In this case, we've been talking about improving the immune system. Dear John, thanks for your interest in improving your immune system. I've been following information from the Million Lives Project. Their goal is to help a million people or more understand how to use natural ways to improve your health. One of their videos is on the importance of vitamin D. It's an eye opener. Here's the link. And there's the link to a YouTube video that you can get off of our Synergy Family website for the importance of vitamin D. Or if you're going to talk to them about the importance of boosting your immune system, you could do something to this effect. Dear John, thanks for your interest in improving your immune system. I've been following information from Sue Buena Salute. Their goal is to help our Hispanic community 
understand how to use natural ways to improve our health. And one of the products that they talk about is this new product that has recently come on the marketplace called Immune Booster. It is fantastic for boosting the immune system. Here's the link. I want you to watch the whole video. The first two and a half minutes will give you a good overview on this product, but the real meat is in the remaining 15 minutes where you're going to understand how every ingredient in that product directly improves your immune system. If you have any questions, give me a call. Otherwise, I'll follow up with you in the next couple of days to see what you think. Again, I've changed the information that you see on the screen and I've changed that email that I'm sending out to a person based upon other information I wanna share with them. And again, putting it in a context of helping them to understand the importance of what they're going to watch and how it can help them. Um, you know, we, we've got so many products in Synergy Worldwide. You know, last week we talked about all the products that we have that help with regards to antioxidants and helping to protect us from free radical damage. We've talked in the past about the importance of vitamin D. You know, if you, I, I can't remember if it was this week or the prior week that I had a conversation with an individual that I personally believe that the greatest health initiative that could be done here in the United States, as well as worldwide, would be for every person to have their blood tested for their vitamin D levels. And that anyone who is insufficient or deficient in their vitamin D levels get on a vitamin D supplement immediately and get their vitamin D levels back into the normal range. It is most likely the most cost-effective health initiative and most effective health initiative that could be implemented to helping people improve their cardiovascular health, their diabetic health, and improve their immune system. We have a great product in vitamin D3. You're not gonna make a lot of money off of it, but you are helping a lot of people by simply getting the vitamin D3 supplement into their system. Or the new immune booster that we have. You know, Synergy Worldwide, this is just a fantastic product for helping to boost your immune system. It's cost effective. I mean, you're looking at just slightly over a dollar a day to help a person take a significant a product that can significantly improve their immune system. Now, where do you find the videos? Again, if you go to our Synergy family and you click on let's say in this case, immune health, well, that's where you're going to find these two products. You know, you scroll down and what do we have? We have this video here that we did, Pro Arsenic Plus Immune, immune Booster. You, you can share that. Right click, copy and paste the URL, and that's the URL that you send in the person, in, in the email that you send to them. Or if you're wanting them to help them understand the importance of vitamin D, Here's our vitamin D deficiency video. You know, that's an eye opener. When people see that, they're gonna understand the importance of increasing their vitamin D levels. And they're gonna understand that they've gotta do it through supplements that contain vitamin D3. Or if you're going to be doing stuff with regards to nitric oxide therapy, uh, again, you know, there's just a wealth of material that you have here that you can send. Well. Maybe you want to send what is nitric oxide therapy, you know, you, so you can help a person to understand what nitric oxide therapy is, how important it is to their cardiovascular health. Whatever video that you're going to market, you just need to watch ahead of time to make sure that that video is the video that you believe will be the best one for that individual. If you're talking to a person who's got high blood pressure, well, you can come down to this page here, down to the bottom of this page, and you can pull out the video here 
how nitric oxide therapy addresses high blood pressure and send that to the individual. Or if you're talking to a person who's a diabetic, this is the video that we, you would send to them in the, in the email that you're sending to them because you, you know, they've disclosed to you that they're diabetic. They're, you know, they, they've got complications, uh, whatever it might be. Has your doctor ever talked to you about nitric oxide therapy? Huh? What's that? You've never heard of nitric oxide therapy? No. This is Nobel Prize winning information. This is a natural way for you to address your diabetic complications. In fact, I've got a great video on how you can harness the power of nitric oxide therapy to improve wound healing, to improve circulation, to address a lot of the complications of diabetes. Would you be interested in getting a link to that video? Yeah. Most people don't want to be sick, and most people don't want to take medications. So you can help them in that process. So, so again, it's learning how to utilize the resources that you have for third-party validation. But before you send that, you've got to create interest to the art of asking questions. So with that said, do I have anyone that has any questions for me on anything that I've presented to you? Or if there's any role playing that you would like to do to help you in your process of learning how to use the art of asking questions to increase your probability for success. You have... Hey, David. Hey, good morning, Dan, how are you? Good, and yourself? Good, good. Uh... Thanks for giving me all that free marketing. I appreciate that. Hey, David, I saw you on there. So it was okay that I used Sue Buena Salud. It's great. Thank you, Dan. I, you know, for many years, I've been, I've been uh, uh, talking about Sue Buena Salud and my uh, radio show was, was that I hosted was called Sue Buena Salud. And, and you're right now I am formally incorporating and creating a brand for Sue Buena Salud that encompasses uh, several of the things I do that are exciting. And, uh, and I'm really uh, glad you brought up this topic, Dan, because it is so important uh, in what we do for our own business and our own growth and, and the emphasis we make in marketing. Uh, marketing, of course, is what everyone does. Marketing then brings in the clients, which gives us the opportunity to ask questions, of course. And that's what it's all about. So... I just wanted to add, Dan, that, uh, you know, every time, every time any, even this topic that you've talked about, as you said many times, comes up, it's, it's great that, that you bring it up again because well, there's always a takeaway. There's always a takeaway on this. And um, one of the things that I, that I, that I am hearing you talk about, you know, ha things like, have you not heard about nitric oxide therapy is a great way to intrigue. And in the art of asking questions, uh, I always believe that we need to be in a position, I wouldn't say of power, but, but between us, we could say a, a power position in that we have experienced something exciting and life-changing that people need to know about. When we talk to someone in the art of asking questions, they need to see the excitement in us. They need to see the, 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 the seriousness of, of where we are. And of course, in the process of asking the questions or or having the exchange of conversation, what I call the exploring stage, where we're gathering information, uh, they need to, to realize that in, 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 the, in, the, in, the, in the beginning stages where they're in a position where they don't know what they don't know, and as we have that conversation and, and the art of asking questions, we're slowly moving them to the position of transferring our energy to them. So if I just may add that is, is that's important when we do ask questions and when we do engage in a conversation, um, we're also trying to get that person really to start asking us questions and being intrigued. So by the time you get to the point where you want to share a video, they are already uh, anticipating something valuable coming to them. And, uh, and, and so thank you, Dan, for, for this, uh, this conversation. I just wanted to add that little bit because I think in the art of asking questions, we need to, to transfer that, that excitement that we're trying to portray them that can be a, a solution to a problem 
that they currently have because as a result of our marketing, they've contacted us because there is there is an issue that they're interested in that that they'd like our help to resolve. So, uh, thank you, Dan. You're welcome, David. And and David, as you were talking, I was I was thinking in terms of your time on the radio, because on your time on the radio, you really don't have a conversation with people where you're engaged in back and forth conversation. You have a conversation that's basically one sided, you sharing information with them. And hopefully the information you share with them creates a response. Am I correct so far? Yes, yes, that's correct. So you'll notice that I just used the art of asking questions to confirm and make sure I'm on the right track. See? Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, yep. so, so David, I, I'm thinking of a radio show because sometimes you have limited amount of time and I'm thinking what, what causes people to stop? Typically what causes people to stop is a question. So David, if I was on the radio show, I would do something like this. I know that you're all out there, either in your car or in your home, listening to me right now. And I have a question for you. How many people know about nitric oxide therapy? Little pause. Now I can't hear your response, but I would bet that nine out of 10 of you have never heard of nitric oxide therapy. Yet this is Nobel prize winning information. This is a natural way for you to address cardiovascular concerns like diabetic complications and high blood pressure and erectile dysfunction for men and cognitive function, anything that has to do with blood flow. And we all know in our Hispanic community, we got some problems there. So if you know of someone, either yourself or in your family that has blood flow issues, poor circulation, and you would like to know more about this nitric oxide therapy, then I want you to call my number, leave me your email address, and I will then send you a video to help you understand how nitric oxide therapy could be a natural way for you to address those issues for yourself or a family member. Dan, like I said, every time I listen, I have a takeaway. So thank you for that. That's a, a great takeaway, a great, great way to use the power of the pause in asking a question to generate interest and then a segue to, to an exciting video I could send out. Yeah. That's a great way. Thank you. You're welcome, David. Anyone else before we say goodbye today? Hi, Dan. It's Donald. Yes, Donald. Excellent presentation and a super, super ending. I love, I love that, the, the radio show segue. So thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. All right. Final call for questions before we go. Well, thank you, everyone. Have a blessed weekend.